Welcome back everyone. This is the Birds of Paradise podcast. I'm here, Sheikh Al Masoom, the innocent Sheikh, and with my brother Brother Ishmael. And we are talking today on Juma, Juma Mubarak, to everyone watching today. Tell them Juma Mubarak, brother. Yeah, Juma Mubarak. Yeah, yeah. So the the the, the selection of uh, topics today has been requested from our user base. We we read all the comments, we read all the emails, everything you send us, all the DMs. We're in there swimming deep. And basically we, we, we decided that to address a couple of issues because something that's come up for the community recently is the question of fried chicken. Uh, all the fried chicken shops, the, as you can see, we have Chicken Valley provisions today. This video is sponsored by Chicken Valley, Shepherd's Bush, W12. Please, I just wanna say that I'm very happy. Are you happy, Brother Ishmael? It's good chicken. Yeah, the sun is shining. We're in the birds of paradise. We're in paradise, genital bush, and uh, yeah, the, the 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 questions that we get in the comments and the DMs is really about the the position of podcast in Islam. And uh, I've been thinking a lot about this because you know, in the coming from the position of a Shia ethno ashari um, ishtihad, we 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 have a special position compared to our Sunni counterparts. Even though our brother here, brother Ishmael, is a Sunni counterpart, so we be thinking about how in the Shia faith, in the Shia tradition, in the Shia school of thought of Islam, the Twelver in particular, there has been this distinction made that since the Mongol invasion in the Islamic civilization or historical period, we actually get to the point where um, in the Sunnite part of the Ummah. The, the gates of Ijtihad were closed and therefore there is no jurisprudence taking place and so the the brothers and sisters that, that, that follow this path which is the overwhelming majority of the Islam is basically in a position where they do no longer do Ijtihad they do not do a live jurisprudence did you know that my Sunni counterpart? I'm learning this so the Shia school in Iran, in Najaf, in Lebanon, in Iraq you know the these seminaries and these schools, or these 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 monastic places where they teach mandak, they teach logic, they teach reason. Uh, Shia uh, tradition is actually alive with jurisprudence. We can reframe and change things, and you know um, there is this idea that we we are waiting for the twelfth Imam, but then the Khomeini came in Iran and he did wilayat al-Fari and he showed us that we don't need to wait for the twelfth Imam. We can mm. actually take political action. Mm. Did you know about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah, and and that's why Khomeini didn't go to a Sunni country. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, uh, we we can change things, and and we, we we if Khomeini was alive today, or if the, if the Mahdi was 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 here right now, um, he would not no longer do Juma khutbah before the prayer. He would do Juma podcast. Mm. Did you know this? I, it seems like a good idea. It's a jurisprudential mm -hmm. position that I, I as Sheikh Al Masoom have decided is appropriate to instigate on this uh, glorious Friday afternoon and the way that the prayers were demarcated in the traditional understanding of the Islamic lunar and solar uh, guidance is we, we follow the path of the sun mm -hmm. so there is some differences but in general the Muslims they pray five times a day sunrise at the zenith of the sun, as the sun is setting, and many things like this. Sunset being the end of the day and the final prayers. And so, even the time of prayer, I would argue, is flexible now because we have 9 to 5 neoliberal capitalism and mm. people are on their own calendars. Every, no one is in sync. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to expect everyone to pray at the same time. So, you know, you can pray in your own time. Mm. Mindfulness. Mm. Islam is the original of this. And so the, 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 the Juma podcast gives you the freedom to listen to the Juma khutbah any day that you like. You can listen to it even on a day that is not Juma. You can listen to it three months later and still mm. get the same benefit. And you can pray in your own time. Because I listen to podcasts when I'm on a treadmill in the gym. And it's very important to be healthy in Islam, Brother Ishmael. What do you think of this? Yeah, health is really important. Yeah, as he eats fried chicken. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about reframing Islamic principles, Islamic prayers, Islamic jurisprudential truths for the modern era. 
And the way that we do this is we, we take Juma Khutbah, we make Juma podcast. We record it on Juma, but you can listen to it whenever you want. Mm-hmm. Freedom. And Islam is all about freedom. La ikrah fi din, as I said in the Quran, there is no compulsion in religion. Mm. Do you feel compelled? I feel compelled to eat chicken. So, the other question that we get from our commenters um, on our YouTube channel, uh, please subscribe, uh, ring the notification bell, Birds of Prey podcast, sorry, mm-hmm. Birds of Paradise. Mm. <laughs> sorry, it's a bit of a Freudian yeah. slip. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> the, the other issue is people asking, is the fried chicken really halal? And there has been some controversy mm. in the Islamic Ummah because one of the other shuyukh, which I will not mention by name, because we know we do not dignify those who disagree with us. You know, this podcast game is very, uh, very tight and competitive. And so, the the situation is that one of the other shuyukh from our Sunni counterparts who cannot do jurisprudence because gates of ijtihad are closed in Sunni Islam, us in the Shia if not Ashari twelve a school. We have uh, we we are the only Muslims that have a license to think, a divine connection, allowing us to think. We are the only thinking Muslims, um, and and so, in thinking about what it means to be eating fried chicken, mm-hmm. I I thought I'd invite Brother Ishmael onto mm. our program because yep. Brother Ishmael <coughs> is very much an adherent of mm. the fried chicken mm. way of life, mm-hmm. and. People think that fried chicken and takeaway food in general is not from our tradition, mm. and uh, I would beg to differ. And 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 the one evidence I have for this is 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 one that is more on an existential phenomenological aspect. Mm. So I was reading a lot of Jean-Paul Sartre, and those of you who know, um, Franz Fanon was a student of Jean-Paul Sartre. Do you know this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, make sure you have the microphone close to your mouth, please. I know you, you are not a professional podcaster like me, a uh, <coughs> giver, but please make sure you, you have good good mic etiquette. Yeah. Adabul uh, mic. Mm. Um, so the, the, the issue of the fried chicken and the, the traditionalism actually starts in an existential approach because Jean-Paul Sartre, was the teacher of Franz Fanon. And we know what Fanon done. We don't need to talk about this. But many people do not know that uh, Ali Shariati was an Iranian classmate of Franz Fanon. And they both studied under Sartre. Okay? So, Ali Shariati is actually the, the one who instigated the r- religious revolution in 1979. And Michel Foucault, Foucault, yeah? Foucault. Yeah. He, he was in Iran at this time as well. So uh, there is a connection between existentialism and spiritual Islam, Shia, Sufism. Yeah. And um, th- through this kind of existential analysis of the takeaway vendors that we, yeah. that we see around us in this yeah. urban metropolis landscape uh, that is West London, we actually come to realize that the spinning dervish was the inspiration for the Dona Kebab. Mm. Did you know this? I can see a very abstract connection, yes. The, the, the spinning of meat, the spinning yeah. of desire, mm. the spinning of truth, the spinning of reality, the spinning of the cosmos, the spinning mm. of the earth, the solar system, yeah. the orbital strength, the gravitational pull of Adana Kebab, how it brings the, the hearty, low desires of mankind into the vicinity of the takeaway sector. Mm. This is an Islamic love and attachment that exists between meat and joy. There's a magnetism. Yes. Fana al dona. You heard about this? No. It's a spiritual principle. Al fana al donar. The spinning of the Sufi, the true spiritual existentialist of Islam, the Darvish that came from Maulana Rumi. Mm. You know Maulana? Bishno as Nechun Hekayat Mi Konad as Juda Iha Shekayat Mi Konad. What does Maulana say in this? This leaf, this tree is shedding. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment just to appreciate this. This backdrop. And there's some trains that have been going by and some people are talking in the background. And uh, part, of my, part of my own practice and relationship um, to the tradition of chicken is finding moments of, of calm uh, and quiet like this where I can really appreciate uh, the wisdom of those words. Moments of calm 
appreciation as a train is going above us. This is the urban landscape. This is mindfulness mm. within the cityscape. We are products of this environment. Mm. And I mentioned, I, I requested for Brother Ishmael to join us today as my co-host for the khutbah. And, and those of you who know the tradition of khutbah, actually, is very, very important. The tradi- khutbah always has two parts. One part is devotional. It refers to Allah. And the other part is about current affairs. It's about organizing the state media. And we could argue now that podcast is the state media or a, a state of media. So actually the combination of podcast with devotion is the original format that was brought to us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. <coughs> and so the instead of having the two parts to the khutbah, in terms of its construction of the speech, we have two parts in terms of a counterpart mm. from our Sunni brethren, who mm. is more along the lines of the Sufi, al path of fried chicken. But both denominations. Both denominations. And we believe in solidarity, unity, and mm. the brotherhood of sisterhood as well. So the thing that we are actually discussing today on the Birds of Paradise podcast is the position of chicken because chicken is one of the original birds of paradise. Mm-hmm. There are many hadith talking about the size of the chickens in heaven. Yeah. Very large. Chicken legs. Microphone, please. Chicken legs. Yes, chicken legs. One chicken leg in heaven is the size of your torso, I would say. Uh, so mm. we, we were thinking about how to actually bring this into the fold of the podcast and we thought that we had the devotional element and we can bring the current affairs element as a discussion around chicken and so this was a big request from our user base um, comments please like and subscribe on the dms and the, the below everything on the page um, make many comments we will respond to every single one i will make sure that personally uh, i i I see what the people are saying. It's yeah. important, you know. Yeah. We we have some of the congregation here, but also it's important to engage with the online, and and we've got to get with the times, you know. We've got to get with the times, and so chicken being a bird of paradise. Those of you who have read Attar's wonderful text, mm. Conference of the Birds. In Conference of the Birds, what do we learn? Not sure. Yeah. Th- the Sunnites, they're a bit behind when it comes to the deep esoteric wisdoms of our tradition. Um, in any case, Conference of the Birds, the Hupo, taking thus, you know. Kutubiya. Uh, this, is, this is the word. Even in Spanish, they have this word. And if you go to Orkiva, there is a place called Kutubiya. Very enlightened people are there. Andalusia. Very important part of our history. And... So the, the, the fried chicken as a staple, which comes out of this devotional relationship that we have with the takeaway sector in general, the spinning sama of the mm. spinning dervish represented in the donor kebab. What spiritual lesson can you, can you take from the chicken that is dipped in hot blistering oil? A, a body in motion, like being in relation. It's important to be in a state of a kind of chicken frenzy. Well, I mean, if if we think about it, you know, the the the, 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 the descriptions of the hellfire is not not so different from the frying of the chicken, the the the, the chicken that is s- s- submerged into into this cauldron of pain and intensity, which is very much how how we learn about the hellfire. Mm. And so maybe the fried chicken being such a present part of the Islamic path in the urban landscape it's a remembrance of um the the doom of hell that that we may enter if we do not uh, do our actions correctly what do you think of this does anyone from the congregation would like to say something yeah hussein yeah hussein they burnt the family we we will not go there (laughs) It's a different fire, but our hearts bleed for. What do you think about uh, Brother Masum? What do you think about people who are prepared to sell their families for a chicken nugget? 
there is depra deprivation and depravity and 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 really um, if if we could think how can we fix this solution it may be that there can be a situation where the the mosque and the masjid and the chicken shop mm. is combined what how would you think of uh, what could be a kind of a utopian chicken shop mosque because the original mosques in islam they were community centers and now it seems the chicken shop is more of a community center than the mosque would you agree brother ishmael there's more conversation more conversation so in 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 your mind if we were to think of a utopian chicken shop one that reminds us of hell but also gives us pleasures and bounties and memorandums from the divine inspiration of the elders and the predecessors and the ancestors and the saints and the prophets and the ahlil jannah mm -hmm. how would you understand this i think i'm reluctant to to buy into into the idea of a utopia because the moment we identify what we'd like that a utopia to be we sort of fix it into something and i think this is something that many chicken shops experience that they they're, they're bounded by their location brother ishmael i have i have actually listened for around 37 seconds to to your to your to your this this prose that you espouse mm. and it reminds me of the kind of things that the the people who studied in the school of oriental and african studies mm. now is known as soas mm. they speak in these terms mm. are you a relativist my brother there's nothing relative here are you a postmodernist my brother there's nothing postmodern here are you trying to reframe our religion in such a way that <coughs> it loses all meaning and significance from the contemporary day the question of religion and the question of utopia are separate please expand utopia is primarily as we understand it today a post war concept and how does the chicken come into this it is a uh, i think the chicken is something that uh, evades categories um and kind of is between traditions it sort of is a, is a is a messenger between the past and the present okay it's a connecting node and uh, we we refer to the prophet muhammad as a messenger but the messenger comes with the message and the message is the quran which is from allah ajwazal aj, aj, ajwazal the chicken as a messenger what is the message it seems that you have consumed so much of the chicken it it has it has made you insensitive to the actual guidance that is trapped within its flesh the genetic code the methylation principles epigenetics all of these types of things assalamu alaikum habibi how would you respond to this i remember my f my my first experience of a of a chicken shop uh, it was not an independent chicken shop but was a franchise when the mcdonalds came to karachi and opened for the first time it opened in nazmabad and everyone ran there to to buy in buy the happy meals and play in the sort of happiness playgrounds that they had and there was ronald mcdonald who seems to have disappeared entirely from our current landscape and i remember it being something of complete utopian joy there was there was a cleanliness there was a there were bright colors there was a sense of calm and unity um i loved those tunnels that i could play in and at the end i would have chicken nuggets and and fries and some sort of toy to construct um and when i had to leave the shop i don't know i had to go back to to a sense of myself ah oh, okay i think i understand because you are describing a situation in which the 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 modern economic risk around food poisoning and uh, insurance tax claims uh, for the for these franchises uh, encourages them to have a level of cleanliness that can only be desired in a place of worship and therefore mm -hmm. the cleanliness you found in the ch the chicken shop in in the franchise in the karachi actually g gave you a sense that that this is a civilizational upgrade definitely and i think i suppose to sort of you know the trains going by here the shedding of this tree they were literal boxes constructed of happiness so as opposed to something that you go on a journey boxes like this boxes like this like as this. opposed to you going on a journey and you discover that happiness and 
it's generalized. It was a very contained category of happiness that you could purchase, you could consume, you could dispose of, and then you could go on. And I think this idea of consumption, you know, once you start with, I remember I would I would search for chicken nuggets, and I just I I I couldn't stop. When you see the box like this in the street, thrown down, do you have a feeling there might be something there? You can. That happiness has been taken. Okay. But the cleanliness, the memory of the cleanliness seems to be very poignant. Because in our tradition, brothers and sisters, we have the, the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and Nizafa min al Iman that cleanliness is next to godliness. Mm. And so these franchises with their emphasis on cleanliness due to mm. insurance reasons, food poisoning, tax breaks, mm. these types of things, mm -hmm. they have actually constructed an environment that is more religious than most of our places of worship. And therefore, I would argue that we should be doing this khutbah in a chicken shop. We could have a khutbah fried chicken, KFC. So, if I may, I would like to take a contrary position. Rather than having a chicken shop in one space, we can have it anywhere. This is also... Like the salah. This is also a part of, of the chicken shop. It doesn't end. Why do we need to have these, these, these doors? You see, my brother, I think also in the marketing, because the podcast thing, where I think about mark marketing is very important in Islam because it's how we communicate the message, it's how we invite it, da'wah to Islam, it's how we bring the proselytizing missionary type mm -hmm. of approach. Mm -hmm. And so I can think of salah and salad, but not salah and chikan. It's not doesn't have the same ring. So could there be, instead of a fried chicken, it's a saladed chicken. Salah al saladid shikan. Something a bit exotic sounding, you know? Because uh, I am thinking this type of processed, submerged, mm. reminding of the hellfire experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of intense. No, I like, going back to what you said earlier, I like the sort of Dionysian uh, donut kebab. The sort of the, the spinning brother, brother, dervish. The, the, we, we, the, if we are talking Dionysian, you know, this is very dangerous territory because Dionys, Dionysius, he is the god of wine. We cannot have this in our tradition. We are against alcohol, even though we invented it. What's we invented it to disinvent it. What's your position on Ruavza? Ruafsa, if you leave it out in the sun in this type of weather, it will ferment and become alcoholic. And brother, this is actually a halal way to get drunk. This is the only halal way. Because you cannot judge the percentage unless you take it for uh, laboratory analysis and mass spectrometer and you find that what is the actual alcoholic content is too much. Allah does not require this type of effort. So if you drink it and you get wi drunk by accident, actually Allah will forgive this one. So that is why there is always a Ruafsa somewhere outside. Some of our viewers have uh, accused you of hiding behind words and I wanted to take this opportunity to really ask um, what was your first experience of a chicken shop? My brother, I still have not been in one. Alhamdulillah. I, I worship them from afar. I believe the chicken shop is in the heart of every believer. The spinning donna is the spinning dance of the Sama, of the swirling dervish, the Mawlana Mevlevi tradition of Sufism. I cannot be in such a vicinity of frying and dirt and grease dripping. Brother Ishmael, why do you think I invited you to the Birds of Paradise podcast environment to discuss what is this? Brothers and sisters, we have reached a point in the podcast where Brother Ishmael is dumbfounded by the wisdoms of our tradition. We do not need to justify everything with hadith, Quran. We have our brains, we have reason, we can use ijtihad and our hearts. They can tell us what is the way. Brother Ishmael found a path to Allah through fried chicken. These type of relativistic, so as a postmodern type of analysis and you can find your way. As has been said by the great film, The Lizard, Marmulak, in the Iranian tradition, 
there are as many paths to God as there are people. So please, individuate yourself upon a time where individuality, individualism, neoliberal economy has not been more favorable towards this path of the individual. And therefore, you can find your own way to God listening to our podcast anytime you like. Today is Juma. This is the Juma Khutbah edition, Birds of Paradise. But you can listen to it whenever you want. You can pray whenever you want. You can do mindfulness instead of Salah. Allah is big and the heart of the believer is wide. If you visit our shop, uh, we sell empty boxes um, with our own brand. And you can fill them with whatever you like. I believe it's better to keep it empty. Remember the emptiness of the heart before it receives the joy. We would like to bring you a message from one of our sponsors. Brother Ishmael, do you know who is our sponsor for this episode? Karen Fried Chicken. Karen Fried Chicken. Karen Fried Chicken is a fried chicken establishment in Iran, in Tehran, named after Karen. Looks just like KFC, but tastes halal and high quality. What do you think, brother? Have you been to Iran? Have you ever m- had any fried food or takeaway establishments in that part of the world? Not yet. Okay. So why don't I give you a bit of a history? In... Um, in the time of the Iranian revolution, there was a shared moment of solidarity between the Iranian struggle and the Irish struggle. Do you know any names, any significant figures who waged jihad in Ireland? There is Bobby Sands. Bobby Sands is the first jihadist of the Irish people and he waged jihad against the British He by going on hunger strike. And we are talking about fried chicken. And it's important to remember that when we talk about food, we should always talk about hunger and there is balance in this situation. So Bobby Sands went on a hunger strike. And how did they remember this in Iran? They created a takeaway establishment it's called Bobby Sand Burger. And it also serves fried chicken. What do you think about this? to take a man's hunger strike and make a fast food joint. Is this Amelia's chicken shop did? It's completely different. This is real activism. Amelia is cultural appropriation, co-optation, and using the brown people as props in the background. Ya Allah. So the situation in Iran is that in the Al-Quds day, we march for Palestine. We march for our brothers and sisters. We pray for their freedom. And then we go have Bobby Sands Burger to remember the struggles that are shared with our people, with our civilization, with our hunger. Our hunger is linked to freedom. Maybe that is the path of fried chicken that you need to explore, my brother, from the counterpart of the Islamic Ummah, the Sunni tradition that is not as deep, it's not as philosophical, it's not as wise, it cannot make these kinds of associations. In the Sunni world, you could never have this type of response to Bobby Sands going on hunger strike and make a Bobby Sands burger. Because Bobby Sands Avenue is where the British Embassy used to be, in Tehran. And it's still there, but it used to be called Winston Churchill Avenue, and they changed it to Bobby Sands Avenue when Khomeini did the revolution in 1979. This kind of forward thinking. What do you think of this? Mm. This is real activism. Turning hunger into capitalism. Do you consider yourself a shy radical? Hamja Ahsan. Ahsan Ali. Ahsan. Insan Al Ahsan. Aywa, aywa, aywa. This book really, it gave me an idea for, uh, for this podcast. I read this book, I learned about Aspergistan. And now we have the Birds of Paradise podcast. Where we can discuss anything with an Islamic perspective. May God bless the soul of Hamja Ahsan. Khair al-Nas and Iman al-Ahsan.